Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Xana520, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. In the last episode, we met with the Maku Tree, who directed us to Yol Graveyard, where the first essence of uh, time rested, the Eternal Spirit. And we blew through that dungeon really fast, so we then went off and started trying to explore level 2. However, the dungeon was incredibly unstable in the present, and as a result, it crumbled as we picked up a rock that was standing in front of the dungeon. So, we are now here in the past, courtesy of the Harp of Ages, which we found in Nehru's house. And we're currently searching for a way to appease Ambi so she'll give us some of her bombs. Now, I think I can burn this bush. And inside is a tunnel that leads to a piece of heart. And now we've got three. Nice. Ouch. We've also got a new enemy down here. See this bush? There's a crab under it. Walk along here. Avoid the bats. And it drops us off out here. So, level two is right here, but it's blocked off. So, we can't get inside. So, we are trying to find a way in. I think we can pick up this rock. There we go. Yes, we can. And there's a treasure chest in here. We need to push this one. Push these turtle rocks out of the way. These guys are hard hat beetles. These enemies are like the red and blue uh, enemies from Link to the Past. The ones that would knock you backwards if you hit them with your sword. Anyway, inside this chest is a Gasha Seed. We'll have to start planting these more. Here. And back to where we found that tree with the staircase in it. That's up and around. <laughs> They're both stuck back there. So, the path we actually want to take is right here. Behind this tree here. Ow! Jerk! Stop it! Oh, there's a good look at that crab enemy. This other bush is going to be a Deku Scrub. What are you selling anyway, sir? Oh, you're selling a shield for 50 rupees. What the heck? Talk about overpriced garbage. All right. And what are you selling? 30 rupees. That's actually the price of them, so... If you're going to buy from one of these Deku Scrubs, buy from that one. I think the reason he's selling a shield is because there are like likes somewhere nearby. I could be wrong. Anyway. Get this rock. Find 30 rupees. That's nice. There's hard, more hard hat beetles. Ouch. There's a staircase here. And this will lead us to this place. What are you selling? A shield for 10 rupees! Okay! Buy from that guy! Oh. Well, we need to find the other staircase. Get out of my way. I used to call those guys Mr. Muffers when I was little, and I'm not sure where the name came from. I think it's because it looked like they had a beard, and they were just sort of like... <laughs> with their mouth as they were moving. It... I don't know. Don't... judge me. Anyway, this is the staircase we need. This is a crab on this side. And here we get mystery seeds. What they do is a mystery. Try them on many things. Open your seed satchel to use them. So these are also going to go into our seed satchel. When you select your seed satchel, you'll be able to switch to them. And you can use them on, among other things, these owl statues. Do not forget to feed me mystery seeds. 
These guys behave in a similar way to the owl walls from a link or er, Link's Awakening and the the triangle stones from a link to the past. Are you trying to sneak up on me? Get out of here. But yeah, those owl stones will give you I think they're called owl stones actually. They'll give you tips and hints based on where they're located. Anyway. Well, now that we have mystery seeds... Those are the mystery seeds Queen Ambi has been demanding. Nice work, kid. I'll take you to the palace. Not bad, kid. You found them. Now come with me to meet Queen Ambi. Oh, we get to meet the queen. Everything just got real saturated. Queen Ambi. He says he wishes to pay tribute. He brings the mystery seeds your majesty has been seeking. What have you brought before me? This guy takes all of our mystery seeds, by the way. Mystery seeds! Meiru desires mystery seeds more than anything else. She will be most pleased. By what name do you go, boy? Link? I offer a reward, Link. Bring it here. Link, this is your reward. Take it with great thanks. You got ten bombs! My palace is very large. You will not be able to find the way out alone. I shall guide you. Let's go, kid. Will that boy be able to return? Yes, your majesty. Link! Ha! You've done well! First you let me through the barrier, now you bring me mystery seeds! Such a nice boy. Taking advantage of people's kindness is too easy! This makes one less thing that can obstruct my ambitions. But my, these mystery seeds are unpleasant. Their sight and smell... Hmm. Anyhow... Queen Amby? Now, with my powers, the flow of time is yours to command. For you, I shall create a day that never ends, so the people will never sleep, and work on the tower can continue. And when the tower reaches the heavens, you shall go down in history as the greatest queen to ever live. Oh, I shall be known as a great queen. Nehru, Oracle of Ages, give me an endless day so the people can work without stopping to rest. Young and old alike will work toward my ends. <laughs> we are closer to the Age of Shadow, but it's still premature. The true shadow will fall when the Black Tower reaches the heavens and I climb to its highest turret. Then it will come. <laughs> nice work, kid. Ambi was most pleased. You may, you may go now. Well, we no longer have any mystery seeds, but we do have ten bombs, and we can find mystery seeds again should we need them. However, before we get too carried away, there is something we need to tend to. And that is the naming of Bippin' and Blossom's child. So, because I only got one suggestion, that's the suggestion I'm going to go with, as silly as it is. So, if we come over here to Bippin' and Blossom's house, Talk a bit. Blossom here. I am Blossom. This is my first child, a healthy baby boy. But I'm having trouble choosing a name. Can you help me think of one? What would you call him? Well, because I got no other suggestions, you, sir, shall henceforth be known as Beans. Yes, I would name him Beans. And he seems happy to have the name, so... We'll come back at a later time to deal with Baby Beans. We'll be checking in on him regularly. But now that we've completed this 
part of the story, the shop will now be selling bombs for 20 rupees. In case you need to buy bombs. But anyway, let's quickly hop back into the past. Hello, tree, waif tree waifu. Alright, now back to the Deku Forest. Do you guys have anything new to say? Nope. You don't have anything new to say. Hey, it's Maple. Let's clear a path here, so I don't have to deal with it. Boink. Oh, hello. Can I reach that? Ouch. Watch where you're walking. I came through this weird tunnel and it was flying happily along. What are you doing here anyway? Well, I'm taking your stuff too. I cannot reach that. That was a magic potion. That item restores health. Oh, I probably could have reached it if I'd gone from the left. Whatever. You little... I'll remember this. So the magic potion behaves like a one-up. If you lose all your hearts, it will refill your hearts to full. I think. Anyway, um... This, uh... NPC is gone now. So, we are free to take our bombs. And blow open the front of level 2. Wing Dungeon. What do you have to say? Well, I can't check. Oh, wait, maybe I can. I bet there's mystery seeds under one of these... Yeah, there we go. Alright, what do you have to say? Good defense is the best offense against spikes. Yes. That is a clue, because we need to use our shield to flip over these spiked beetles. Who will charge at us otherwise. They're invulnerable otherwise, uh, if you don't flip them over. And now we get the infamous block puzzle. So, this flame needs to be blue, or uh, not blue, red. That's what the red tiles mean. But if we were to just push it into the hole, well, it would be blue. So what we have to do instead is roll this down, roll this over, roll this up, and now, it's still going to be blue, isn't it? Yeah, it's still going to be blue. Hang on. I can fix this. Now it'll be red. This is what I mean about this game being heavy on the puzzles. Push this. There's a bombable wall here. You may not be able to see it too well, but it's there. Come through here. And grab the dungeon map. Let's take a peek. It looks like a bird. And a lid. But mostly a bird. Get out of here. Enemies will spawn in random locations in the room. We also get the introduction of minecarts in their tracks. And I think this mechanic only appears in this game, not seasons. Watch out for the sparks. We currently don't have a weapon that can deal with them. Instead, we come in here and get to deal with this pig moblin with a sword. Enemies with swords will charge you. Key. So now we can get through that locked door we saw at the entrance. Watch out for the sparks. Ow. Such a shame they give you the boomerang so late in this game. Oops, spoilers! Yeah, there's a boomerang in this game, and it's the only weapon that can destroy sparks. I think. Well, destroy them. I don't know if you can use another item to make them go away. Anyway, we're gonna have to deal with these spiked beetles again. 
as they respawn after you go X number of rooms. If you let them sit for too long, they'll flip back over, so be bear that in mind. Alright, a bunch of ropes. Get rid of the ropes. Now we can move that block. But before we do, we want to bomb this wall. Deal with the zoles, deal with the gels, deal with the pig moblins. And check out this area. Another 2D side scrolling section. Actually, have we gotten a 2D side scrolling section yet? I don't think we have. We got a big thwomp here. Let him fall down. And then use this floating block here to climb to the top. Whoop! Whoop, 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 whoop. And find another small key. rupees. I believe there's spikes down below. Either that or they they issue the spikes for right now. Are there spikes down here? Nope, there's no spikes. Okay, so they're they're nice with the first 2D section, I guess. I think this is the first 2D section. And we, the ropes are still gone, so we can push that block and find the compass. wielding pig moblins. How are we meant to get to that? Questions abound. Well, we've got a minecart here now. Nope. In order to get into this guy, you just walk towards it, hop in. You can face different directions with the D-pad. You can swing your sword with uh, whatever button that is. There's other items you can use while you're in the minecart too, but... Anyway. Oh, hello. Who are you? One with no wings is no match for me. I'm not sure what the name of this enemy is, but I will put it on screen. So the gimmick for this enemy is that he flies around with his ears, and he tries to hit you. And if he hits the ground, he'll leave a hole in the floor. One trick you can do is to walk around on the outside edge of this room because these blue tiles cannot be destroyed for the reason of, you know, if they just got destroyed, you wouldn't be able to leave the room. I'm gonna let him float. Eventually, he's gonna start flapping or moving faster. And when he starts moving faster, you know he's gonna be in on low health. But also, when he starts flapping faster, oh, he's flapping faster, he's going to do m multiple uh, drops. One, two, oop, missed. Come on. One, two, there we go. Got him taken care of. That's a really early mini boss. Surely we're not done with this already. All right, so we got two paths now. We got that one and this one. Well, let's go down here first. What's in here? Well, this is actually the place where you fall down whenever you uh, fall down one of its holes. This room, however, watch out for the anti-fairies. We've got some hooded stouthos. They'll shoot arrows at you. And here's a puzzle that we can't do anything with right now. So let's go down here instead. We've got these guys now in the center where we can't actually destroy them. The best we can do is deflect their arrows. Oh, that's mean. What are you going to do that for? Okay, get rid of this. Well, we can't do anything with that door and that panel there, so let's check what's upstairs. Upstairs, we've got a 2D section. Make sure you hold back when you drop drop down there, because otherwise you're going to be in a mess of hurt. Anyway, we come over here, and you got Rock's Feather. You feel light as a feather. 
So we now have Rock's Feather, which means we have gained the ability to jump. I need you down here, because I need to jump on top of you. Good luck getting over there, because I've never been able to. Anyway, up here, we find 30 rupees, which is neat. And we can now solve this puzzle. However, word of caution, these are cracked tiles. If you stand on one too long, it'll turn into a hole. So bear that in mind. Anyway, what we need to do is jump onto this tile. These tiles need to be a certain color in order for whatever they're doing to actually work. In this case, that needed to be red. Let's hop down here, jump in another minecart. While we're riding the minecart, we're gonna bump off that gate, hit that switch to stay in this room. Now, before we deal with this room, we're going to deal with this hole in the wall. Because in here, there is a key. But we have to deal with the two keys and the two sword wielding hooded Stalfos. How much of this dungeon have we explored? Most of it, actually. Anyway, so, this puzzle. We need to get the block to be blue when it's in the hole. So, just roll the block around a little bit and then push it in. And now we're off. back in this room. So, these these panels are a little weird because sometimes you can change two of their colors at the same time. Not sure why that is, but anyway, solving that puzzle is going to get you another key. Now, we should have everything we need to deal with this. So, before we deal with that locked block, we're going to come down here this room. We need to come over here and open this gate. Otherwise we're just going to bounce off of it and go back up to where we started. Open the block. Hop in here. Go down here. Go through here. We're in here, and now, the way we get this chest becomes incredibly obvious. And we get a Gash Seed. Nice. Deal with these guys real quick. And now we get a... Oh, I forgot about you. And you. Some key hats. Now we get a... Sokoban puzzle. We need to get a pot on that button. So, what we need to do is break these three, and then push this one all the way up here. Now, jump over here, push it all the way to the wall, push it down, and push it over here. And there we go. Another anti-fairy. Okay, this puzzle. This puzzle is interesting. So, we've got this colored torch here. And by switching the color of the panel in front of it, we change the color of the torch. We have to make the pattern that is over here. But, we can only move the blocks when their color is lit. So, get out of here. Let's push this blue one in place. Push this. Push that. It's gonna be a lot of block pushing in this game. Get used to it, guys. Make it red. 
smash all these blocks down here. And key. So, up is going to be the boss. So let's go in here first. This goofy room is home to six rather unique enemies. These are color-changing gels. Currently, they're red. You can see where they're at, but they're completely invulnerable while they match the color of the floor. So what you have to do is make them not match the color of the floor. Or rather, make the floor not match them. Actually, I think there might be seven of them. There we go. Once they're all taken care of, we can get the boss key. Whoa. Now we can come up here. This room is full of sparks. I think there's an owl statue coming up here in a bit. Alright, let's face off against this boss. Huh. Alright, what do you have to say? The red face fears smoke. Like the Dongo does? Well, if we come up here, here is our boss. This is Head Thwomp. I don't need that. I need this. So, what we need to do here is throw... He's just going to sit in the middle of the room and spin. And uh, periodically, he's going to throw out some fireballs. But what we have to do is throw a bomb into his crown there whenever the red face is active. Occasionally, he will also throw out bombs, so you never have to worry about running out. Also, if I could give you a suggestion, stay off of these platforms. These platforms are not useful. Uh-oh, we got green. Alright, what's green gonna do? I think green is the... Yeah, he just throws out a bunch more fireballs. Alright. Each head has a different attack. I believe the blue one is going to be mini fireballs. That are gonna, like, spin around the room. Yep. There's a way to not get hit by these. It's not... It's not stand there. Wow, I died. Okay. Well, let's make... <laughs> Quick jaunt back to the boss! I couldn't get out of there. Oh, you reset my gate! Jerk. Do not knock me into this hole. I believe they reset my gate. I think the way to actually avoid those fireballs is to stand in the... like, the little corner below him. Not in the little cubby on the ladder. I don't think I've ever died to that boss. Oh man, alright. <laughs> We may not have enough time to finish this. Okay, I can't have you being there. I can't have you being here either. We're probably gonna get back to the boss or then I'm gonna have to end it off. Ouch. Ouch. Ouch! Stop! No! Cut it out! Man, that health potion would have come in real handy. Get out of here, Anti-Fairy. Can I get a heart? Can I get something? You two. Can one of you drop a heart? Bombs. Actually, you know what? I know who drops hearts. These stupid things. 
Yeah, there are seven of them. There we go. That's better. But unfortunately, we've run out of time. So, next time on The Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Ages, we're gonna have a rematch with Head Thwomp here. This is Anna520, signing out.